That's a good answer. I ain't in the gym right now. Mm. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's get it popping. All right. But, you know, this is a, this is a thing. This is, we had to come and speak to the man. Uh, what from man? You. <laughs> <laughs> you know what oh, I mean? Man. You, you gotta understand, we do a lot of hip hop interviews, right? And we're always interviewing rappers and different tastemakers and stuff like that. And, and legends, right? Like, what we got on the wall, right behind you, we got Maestro Fresh West. We had an interview with him. That's a legend. But a lot of people don't realize how much of a legend you are. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Because all these different people had to come through and meet meet up with Eugene or come through to play the record at one point in time. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So no matter how many different things that these guys have gone on to go do, you're still a legend because at one point you're the, you, they had to come see you. You're the foundation. Well, all I wanted to do was just, you know, the music, you know what I mean? Mm. Because I was born in Trinidad and we, you know, music was always around yeah. us, you know what I mean? Trini, right? So I just came up here and I wanted to do some kind of business, mm -hmm. but always buying records and I just wanted to do music and uh, I had an opportuni opportunity mm -hmm. to open a record store and I just rolled with it, you know? Yeah. And I just wanted to do, um, let everybody know all the underground because that's what I was interested in. Yeah. Or not the big names or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like somebody like Whitney Houston, when she first come out with record, mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, this is crazy, you know? And yeah. put on a mix tape and playing it loud in the car and mm. telling people know, you know, about it. Yeah. So that's what I want to do. Let all, you know, people know about um, like the underground people. Yeah, the scene. R&B hip-hop reggae yeah. whatever you know what i mean did you have a record store back in trinidad no actually we had a uh, my dad had a, a grocery store mm. but mm. um he he knew someone who had um jukeboxes all over in trinidad okay and so one time she had like all these records and she didn't know what to do with it so she said you want to take it and she gave it to us for cheap so yeah she bought all these records and i was going through them and taking what I would want and wow. selling them and you know but it's thousands man we had thousands of 45s mm. wow yeah what would you think would be most one of the most classic 45 that you like had and like don't have no more no I still have them okay <laughs> I brought them up um, from Trinidad and wow. when we move up here and I kept everything mm. me and my wow. brother we we just kept everything all the records you know we just brought it up so wow like old james brown like yeah james brown and disco stuff reggae soca mm. wow. we had all of that stuff wow you know we didn't even introduce introduce the, the, the our segment well, no you just jumped right into we jumped it right into it but <laughs> you just here. dropped the needle on the record <laughs> <laughs> and and for the people who are watching us on youtube we're not in the regular youngsterdam we're in a classic classic place Bear classics on the wall. Synonymous for Toronto hip hop scene. Yes, yes. So, for with no further ado, we have Eugene of the Play the Record. Um, what would landmark? That's what I'm gonna call this a fucking landmark. You know what I'm Definitely saying? Definitely a landmark in the city. And this is the second, the second iteration of the place because the first one is the, was the Young Street location. Right, right. right? Three five seven Young Street. Yeah. Three fifty seven Young. Yeah. What exact year did that open on Young Street? 1990 wow august it's crazy 1990 what was young wow. street like around them times that time um i didn't like it was like it was nice man mm. they had all the little mom and pop stores they had lots of record stores mm -hmm. so that's why we kind of we kind of open up there yeah um there was sam's there was sunrise, e &E's, sunrise. Mm -hmm. i don't even really remember e and e's Wow. It was right next to um, Sam's. Okay. Where, where, small where, um, one. where is that place that um, Best Buy and uh, Future Shop used mm -hmm. to be? Yeah. Yeah, and he was right there. Wow. wow. Yeah, because yeah, there was a couple, there was like a little couple of spots. Boom, boom, was like a little pocket of right. record stores. There's like five, six, seven yeah. stores around, you know? I think there was a Cheapies there, mm -hmm. yeah. um, New World or something like that. But Sam's like had that. the big signs turning. Yeah, Sam had a big sign. We was down the road. And then HMV opened up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The same year, like a couple months after, mm -hmm. HMV 
opened up and we was like, oh my God. We're That's gonna crazy. Get, we're gonna die, man. Yeah. But, you know, we did something different. They did something else. Yeah. They did, that was when CDs came out. Mm -hmm. And so they were doing CDs and cassettes and stuff like that, right? And you guys and the they had record, yeah, but we were focused more, mostly on um, hip hop, reggae, soca, mm -hmm. dance music, techno. Stuff they didn't want to touch. Uh, exactly, on 12 inches, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, drum and bass, um, uh -huh. house music, Rotterdam. Wow. You know, so, you know, club music, yeah. dance, Euro, we did those. So we did something different. So that's why, like, it, it, we didn't really clash. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't do no, no rock, no jazz. We did acid jazz, mm -hmm. Afro Latin, salsa, mu Spanish music, world music. But we wow. didn't, we didn't touch like rock and traditional jazz. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah. So it's just always just been like focusing on the the, the underground and the urban right. culture from time. Yes. Yes. Wow. That's what. So how does it feel? to be the last one standing <sighs> amongst all those people on Young Street, Sam's, yeah. Yeah, well, the it's, Sunshine, it's HMV just shut down the other day, now it's a right, dispensary. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel as the last man standing, as the record store guy well, in Toronto? It's, it's pretty tough, you gotta keep changing all the time. Like, we was changing all the time. Like, one year, house music started to slow down, mm -hmm. but then we got Soka. Mm -hmm. Because Soka is, is is good in in winter yeah that's carnival time right so we were doing pretty good right through the year mm -hmm. because uh, when that kind of died on then you got else pick up. yeah like summer is come in and you know reggae and euro dance whatever yeah so you had to do a little bit of everything some stores did like only one genre mm -hmm. i mean it's good at, for one time and then when things go bad they go you bad know what i mean yeah yeah, so you're saying that genres are like seasonal. Yeah, like so some some might go like the soca, but now soca is right through the year. But now nobody buys soca on vinyl. Mm. You know what I mean? So, and then reggae is like right through the year. But nobody knew about that stuff at that time. Right. You know, when Shabba Ranks and all them guys got big, then People the major looking. labels start signing them. And then next year, you know, they get it and we get... <laughs> We get shafted, man. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So that kind of slowed down the business a little bit. But every minute we try to change, right? Yeah. You get into Rotterdam, you get into techno, yeah. drum and bass. So. There was one point in time where Play the Record used to be the place, the Young Street um, location, right? When anybody used to come into town to do a live performances from the States or whatever, their DJ used to come through to yeah. play the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me some of the most classic DJs that you were like, what? You're oh, in here? All of those guys, TS2, mm -hmm. Danny Tignaglia, Jazzy Jeff, mm -hmm. all those guys. Primo, they always used to come all the time. Wow. Um, who else? Lots of guys, man. Um, Tiesto's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dead Moss used to come before he was, you know, big that, name. That's crazy. Yeah. I even have a... I put on his <laughs> first record. one, yeah. His first record. It's a dance record. So Way this is before, before Dead Mouse was blown up? Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. So what, man just used to just pop up in here and oh, just... Oh, yeah, yeah, lots of people came true, you know? Mm. Lots. It was so busy on a Sunday because usually Saturday you'll have like raves. Yeah. And then after that, they, all the DJs around the world or people around the world, they come and shop on, on Sunday. Sunday was busier than a regular day sometimes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And we only used to open from one to six. Okay. Wow, yeah. So everybody yeah. was trying to just get in early. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And, and, I then remember they, and then they go on, they're flying out, right? So they come in, pop in, pick up some stuff. And then go about Some stuff that uh, maybe they can't get somewhere. We used to get mm. stuff that maybe you can get, like Canadian stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even you were telling me a story the other day when I was in here about Russell Peters. Oh yeah, Russell used to come in the um, store, scratching mm. that was back in early 90s yeah scratching in the back there and my dad would be like who's this guy man <laughs> <laughs> he, he was he's scratching he, he's buying stuff or whatever you know what i mean like but you know that time was you know he was scrunting you know like he was you know he just started off right yeah, yeah. so my dad would like and i i would be like Dad, don't worry, you know what? One day he's going to be big. Mm -hmm. You know? 
He's as a DJ, you thought, or as a comedian? Comedian. Okay. Because I know he was doing the comedian thing. Okay. Right? But he was just fooling around with the um, scratch, and he always loved music, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you see um, Cribs and stuff, he yeah. always have a turntable in his mm -hmm. living room, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And yeah, when he was the mastermind was doing his show on Energy 108, mm -hmm. uh, Russell used to be there all the time. Okay. Yeah. Wow, so that man has some hip hop oh, yeah. roots from the time. Look at his, he was his always Netflix yeah. special. The man has started from scratch, center stage. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Center stage yes. with a big turntable up high, like yeah. make sure everybody him in the middle of the back, yeah. you can see him. That's crazy. Wow. Who else? Who else has popped up in here? I feel like I've. <sighs> There's a lot of guys, boy. Um, can you remember? Got Rake Ollie Ollie right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nick Wooler is from Canada. Mm. And he. he Every time he comes here, you always say the same story, man. What happened to those days, you know? Yeah. Because he used to bring, uh, put out records a lot. And when he'll bring us records, he'll bring like, I don't know, 50, 100. Mm -hmm. And we just bring it out, everything flying on your hands. Yeah. And we were just like, Nick, tomorrow bring another 50. Wow. We're just flying out your hands. Wow. From the Toronto side or from the Canadian perspective, right? Because we see all these different classics on the wall from like I the just Mob can't Deep. stop looking around. Yeah, like, man. You know what I'm saying? Sizzler. But like, who did you see from the Canadian scene that was like starting to bud? Who started becoming big and was coming in here regular, dropping off records, things like that? Oh, well, Nicola. Mm -hmm. um, there was a label called, um, what do you call it? High Bias. Okay. That was very early. They used to put out a lot of records and they were doing good, you know? Yeah. Um, Kenny Glasgow. You know Kenny, right? I heard the name before. He's um, part of, He was part of um, our department. They were big worldwide. Okay. They DJ all over the world. That was... Actually, techno. I have heard of that. That's yeah. like a big like a house music DJ, Yeah, no? yeah, 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 yeah. He played for... Uh, if you look in the video, Paris Hilton, all them stuff, you know? Oh, mm. um, who else? Trini. He used to work for me. Kenny used to work for me too. Okay. Um, Trini, he living in San Francisco now, and he's um, he's doing well. He's putting all records. Mm -hmm. uh, who else, man? There's so much guys. Did you really see like the Cardinals and them? Man, Cardinal, back? yeah, I see them all the time too. Yeah. Yeah, but when they were young, young. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Actually, um, went like I used to see so many guys, right? And they want to put out stuff, but they couldn't put it out. So then I started a label. Mm -hmm. Oh. Right, stepping bigger. Okay. Right, and then ill vibe after that. Stepping bigger, we put out um, apple and orange. Now you know what I'm saying. The apples iced out, you know. And the A's for assholes. So you whoever watching this, and they say this nigga kind of talk like that. Yeah, I'm really a fucking asshole. Wow, wow. that was y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so rich. And Apple, you know, he's doing pretty good. At, well, the record, the old record, yeah, it does good in um Japan, right? That's a classic. Um, Socrates, mm -hmm. there's another one everybody looking forward to. Uh, wow. Freaks of Reality. Mm -hmm. I remember that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit. And then Rude, um, you know too Rude, Richard? Yeah. He, uh, he produced some of the stuff and uh, he put a, a compilation together with Chaos and, oh, wow. you know, Socrates, Farrah Munch, we had Snow, we had um, a lot of art artists, you know. So were they recording it in the studio? Because y'all had a studio in, in yes. this spot, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Downstairs. Yeah. So they were recording it down there. Mm. That's crazy. The jewel. But then um, Napster, when the record came out, mm -hmm. it was it was already on the internet already. Fuck. Oh. So that kind of it kind of turned me off. Yeah. Right, so I said, man, you know what? I can't do this again. Yeah. So much work because a long time ago, you know, the studio was expensive, right? Yeah. You had to put up, build a studio with a big board and everything. Not like nowadays, you, you could start off with like a thousand dollar. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we spent a lot of money. It was, it was rough. And then next thing you know, your music is free online. Mm. Yeah, that's not good. That was the time with Napster. Yeah. So that, that was it. That was the end for me. I said no more. I ain't putting out no more. And records. it was at one point in time you had two locations, no? Oh yeah, yeah. I had one in Scarborough. Um, at the store you're talking about, right? Because I feel like there was a the the flagship store on Young, Young Street. Yeah. And then y'all had like a 
specific type of a uh, play the record type of like it was play the record something like it was you had a specific vintage yes like that was across the road okay so there was a spot there and um we said well let's do the use records separately right mm -hmm. so we did that there and we did for like three years but then um i did it with nav and jason palmer okay uh, dj nav uh, yep and then they re they wanted to raise the rent so a lot so we just yeah, call it quit and just move everything to the um young street and things are starting to slight you know yeah with digital, the digital age. you yeah. know serato yeah so even with them times now right how did you start like adjusting because you stayed on young street for a really long time so long time yeah and the digital age was in effect completely like we'd even gone past napster and everything but you were still there on young so how did you adjust to stay there on young in them times well just like, like i said oh yeah we started um do equipment mm -hmm. so Turn started tables. sending tables yeah. and you know because we saw already it happening already right digital yeah. all them turntables starting to invest in the serato so buying less records so we started in the dj controllers production and then i tried to open us uh, open a school in the back okay and then oh, we were wow. doing like um lessons and also when you know like certain artists come in and charge people a little something to to listen to see how they're making their music mm. and they like that right yeah we had djs there so yeah. we tried that and see how it goes and but it was it was tough you know yeah because everybody learning on in, on the internet too mm -hmm. that's the competition we had yeah you could you want to fix a pipe you can look on the internet youtube just mm -hmm. google that shit or google something. everything yeah. yeah yeah so that was kind of tough yeah so so we're here now on, on on spadina right um actually before we go there in the first year because they say like when you're starting a business the first two years are like the hardest right what do you think was one of the hardest things in the first two years when you first opened business well actually for us it wasn't too bad you know actually mm. because the first the first few weeks well nobody coming in nobody know you plus i didn't even advertise to tell you truth, you know okay i just had um we was behind a store there was a convenience store in the yeah, front. In the front of oh, Yelshi, yeah, yeah, right. remember? Yeah. And then in the back so we corner. was down in the back there. This is we true. We only had the front window. That's all. Mm -hmm. We just put records in the front window. Yep. And people see and say, "What do? We, what's going on here?" Yeah. They walk in and they say, "Oh shit!" You know, records yeah, and then they start buying. Right. And then, yeah. right. and then slowly the wood get around. It was all wood amount. Wow. And then after that, crazy. some DJs and see yeah. they see, oh, these guys got some stuff that nobody else have right because mm -hmm. i mean i don't want to say anything about the other stores but sometimes some stores were hoarding the stuff yeah you know what i mean not getting to everybody but me i, I don't care i'm not a dj yeah right i just want to get the music out there yeah. <laughs> right yeah so i want to get it fast i want to be the first one to get it and get it um out there to let everybody know who these new artists are blah yeah. blah blah want to break them yeah you want to break the song yeah because now you we could we could that time we could break records we can't break records anymore this it was true. us the radio stations djs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now so it's different true. there's internet yeah. youtube and you so know many streaming sites yeah. yeah that's all it is you know why because you said you're not a dj and usually djs want to be like yo i want to break this record i want and people need but what made what was no, no, but I don't want to do that. I don't know. Maybe it's Trinidad, you know. It's a love because of music. We, yeah, man. we always yeah. we want to see the latest. Every week we go in and buy records. What is the latest dub? Mm. And everybody want to jam in, in the car. Yeah. You know what I mean? You want to be the first one. So I think that's how we we got that kind of thing, right? Yeah. I remember, my brother. I remember a long time ago. We we were young, like less than ten, and we listening to Casey Kasem. Oh mm -hmm. wow! And we tape in. We don't know money. We just we had a double cassette, you know, ghetto blaster. Yeah, yeah. And we're listening and we recording, Record. <laughs> trying to catch the top yeah, ten. Yeah, catching it, catching it, and then we use that and play it over and over. Mm. Because that time we were young, right? 
no money, right? Yeah. So that, and then after that, we, my dad had the grocery, then we get a little bit of money, then we spend it all on records. Mm -hmm. And every week you go in on to um, Reiner's records or Abraham records, yeah. you know, and buy dub or whatever. Yeah. You know what I always wondered about you, Eugene? Yeah. Because your your background, you're, you're Trini, right? Yeah. But like, you're clearly like not just the average Trini, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you're, you're Chinese, yeah, Chinese, right? Um, yeah, my parents are Chinese. My mom is from Tahiti and my dad is from uh, Vietnam. Okay. Oh, wow. But then he moved to Chi uh, China. Did I ever throw... So how did you end up being born in Trinidad? Well, they met in Trinidad. They, <laughs> you know, back in those days, you know, Vietnam and China is like, you know, crazy down there, right? So yeah. they came by boat, okay, you know, and okay. he started something there and there they, they wasn't... They had nothing. Yeah, yeah. And See. they just start from there, right? Okay, okay. Save money, blah, 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 you know? Yeah. Uh, usual. So over here in Canada, does that... What is... You, do, you, do you notice it throwing people off? Because yeah. they expect you to Even have one accent. Even back in school, you know? Mm. They, they see me talking in the... Uh, I carry it on and you know I'm a hand going all over the place and then people say what the hell is going on man this this guy fighting or what yeah, yeah. yeah. when they come up they'll they'll be like oh this guy he's acting a little, he sounds a little strange man mm. and then that's it you know yeah <laughs> they don't expect to hear a yeah, strong yeah, tree accent too, yeah I was expecting to hear it yeah 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 no man it's it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's even um be like even back home you know like nobody really color you know like. You know, everybody's like one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's only when I came here. Whoa. That's when you, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. oh, shoot. There's something going on here, man. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's yeah. when I feel it. Not back home. Home is like. Nobody gives a shit. No. Yeah. Everybody's it's friends. Everybody's Trinidad. That's it. Everybody. I don't, yeah. I don't know how, how it is now. It could be different now. You know what I mean? I never even thought about that, yeah. No, like, like, like back it, home. Even Trinidad, in Jamaica, in I think people don't really. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Like no, you don't really. Everybody is talk to everybody, and you know, is no how. Yeah, my yeah. first cousin is is Chinese in Jamaica. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, my like first cousin is a Chinese. Really man. feel anything you know or whatever. So everybody's just it's talking to each other. Here, yeah, that's just the accent. Something's. People are like what? Like the right away, they don't expect. No, to hear but the people accent call your names down here. I remember mm -hmm. my um, when we came up here and study, me I had a, two Indian partners, right, and we was living together right uh -huh. and we would be we went to the mall and he one of the guys he liked to sweet talk woman and thing right mm -hmm. and then he would be sweet talking then some of the ladies and then we'll be calling him Paki. Mm. it's like wow. first time we hear that like to his like to his face like yeah both. wow so, so like we was like shocked that's crazy all of we three we were like we shocked man yeah for sure you know like Wow. So, with the music game now, right? Things are changing. People are not uh, are not doing the vinyl thing as much, right? No, it's just there's a few DJs coming, mm -hmm. but uh, and then there's collectors. Right. That's what I want to know. Like, what's the most of what the clientele is now? Like, mostly rock and um, hip hop. Mm -hmm. People coming mm. to pick up vintage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vintage yeah. and new. Okay. Vintage and new. So like new like new records yeah they they reissuing all these gangsta Raekwon, all mm. of these you know what I mean some of them don't get reissued like the Grave Diver man Grave it, don't oh, it, wow. it got it's supposed to get reissued but I ain't even seen it yet mm. it maybe it was so limited because it's so hard to get you know I forgot yeah. about the Grave Diggers yeah <laughs> so now these things rise in price because they're vintage well not only that well yeah the the old stuff would be worth some money yeah you know because like the old stuff the songs sometimes i think is might be better than the new ones okay it's just like if you um like a stamp mm -hmm. you know what i mean like if you had an ink stamp and you stop you know you're stamping your, your your letters right but mm -hmm. then after a while if you don't put no ink on it it's fade away yeah. so it's the same thing unless they make a new stamper then you'll get a, a, a good quality uh, re remastered. So the right? record that they're using to print yeah, the record Yeah, so you don't know what while. they're using. Mm. Like you have to listen. Right here. The Big Mac, the Biggie <laughs> and, um, and Craig Mac. That's, a, that's wow. Yeah. So even something like that, right? Now that Herc's mentioning that right there. 
how did you get how do you get stuff like that see that that is um record store day. yeah it happens twice a year mm -hmm. in april and in november black friday so what um, happens is like artists and certain artists or record company will release something like you can't get that before we'll release it mm -hmm. in a colored vinyl or with a cassette or or holographic or yeah. or, or, or something with a book or, or something yeah with a book or yeah. something like that right make it special mm -hmm. and it comes out only that one day very limited maybe 500 yeah the price is a little high but is a collector's record item. Record store day is crazy in Toronto. Man. Yeah, record store I've gotten day. Up myself no Actually, all over the world is pretty heavy. Yeah, yeah, it's a big day. Big like, line I've up. Had and no idea about this. Yeah, yeah we, man, it's crazy. We, I'm, I'm we have like uh, finding out now. over hundred people waiting on, uh, in the yeah. morning. Wow, and because we, the records could be like eight eight only like twenty records. It's maybe. like Boxing okay, Day back in the day. That's it. That's it. Boxing Day and on Young Street back in the day. Yeah, you don't come and you don't come here by a certain time. You miss out. You're gone. Like, yeah, I want to get. You only get a few. Gone. Like if wow. you order twenty, something you only get one or two. Yeah, something you even get it. Yeah, it's crazy. Record store day is no joke. Yo, I, just, listen for all the DJs out there, like the up and coming DJs, like they don't really think about this stuff because they're all in the digital age, right? Yes. But like this, they is, don't know what we all went through. Yeah. What all those DJs went through, lifting crates. I was just gonna say that. Carry lifting crates. crates. You box of yeah, crates five right crates, now. ten crates. You gotta watch your stuff. Who gonna watch it? You have to have your, your boys with you. <laughs> yep. Mm. Because if you don't watch it, somebody gone with it. Yes, you your crate missing. All of a sudden, yeah, you got a crate missing. Yeah, I've heard those complaints. <laughs> Yo, man, like, or not even the whole crate. They take needles. one, two. They're selecting records. Oh, oh. All the needles. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All needles. Small little things. Expensive shit. So Technique 1200s are not cheap. Yeah. Well, I don't yeah. know about now, but before they weren't cheap. No, no, no. It's not cheap still. Right? You people see? still want it. Right? Mm. Yeah, because people use them for Serato and everything still, right? Yep. Well, that's the, the standard DJ, you know what I mean? Because they have the feel and everything. And because sound. You can get other mm -hmm. ones, right? Like Pioneer and uh, Stanton, but they don't still have that feel. It's still good. Yeah. But... Not the same smoothness yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah. If you used it, you know what I mean. Yeah, you fucking with the music now. What do you listen to now? Like, are you or not? What are you listening to now? Who do you listen to now out of all the new stuff, or do you listen to any of it at all? Um, I listen to a lot of old stuff, mm -hmm. and then my new employee Fion has been introducing me to some nice, you know, like nice new stuff. Okay, you know which I, I like, you know, like blue eyed soul stuff. I don't. Not too much heavy stuff. Mm. You know, like I'm not into that. You know, like I like something groovy. Yeah. You know, um, something like Holland Oat, but they have new new artists now that are coming out. Mm -hmm. They sound something like them. It's nice. I like Latin music. Okay. I listen to some house, but I'm mostly funk, R&B, old school, um, reggae. Yeah. Soca. So, so what's your go-to record? When you just want to on fire, usually like, like a joint, yeah, yeah, go to like, was, yeah, yeah, that Lionel Richie, Teddy Pendergrass, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. classic shit. So you're not you're not messing with none of like the, you're not listening to a Smoke Purple or any did you see that? little. Did you see the man's expressions? Did you see that <laughs> The man's <laughs> expression on his face said enough. Little pump. His eyebrows said, oh, "Way." No, like little, little Uzi Vert. I don't know who the hell they are, man. Oh, well, I know that one, but uh, not really. What about, <laughs> what's the next one? Uh, Gucci Man, Gucci Man, Gucci Man. Yeah, what's, what's no, that's little pump. Really, little no, pump. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No. I made one or two songs, but no, not at home. They can, <laughs> they can make record like music for records. Yeah, like music that's been pressed on vinyl. These artists nowadays, they don't, they don't even make they that. can't make Some it. Sometimes I Some listen to can. somebody mix CDs now, the new ones. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I can't even finish one, man. Like, I just have to go through everything so fast, eh? Yeah. I can't take it, boy. So everything just sounds the same to you, or? Yes, it does sound the same. Mm. I don't know, for you guys, you know, but. Yeah. I get, know, I go through Reggae, spells. same thing. R&B, the same thing. Even soca sometimes mm. is the same thing. Everything song is the same. Yeah, so it's not just a hip hop thing. No, everything. Mm. Do you think it's a lack of creativity, or it's just lazy, and this is what they know they can sell? Yeah, that too. But um, everybody can do whatever they want to do right now. Not like back in the day, right? So anybody can make music, anybody, and just throw it on a beatport, track source, YouTube, Bandcamp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and they don't real, they don't even realize they saw him like Drake. Yeah. Look how much record, man. I, me and my, my niece was in the car yesterday, and wait now, this guy he all over the place, man. And she say, no, this is party next door, or <laughs> this is somebody yeah. featuring Drake, uh, and this one or this some other guy she would mention, and he was singing exactly mm. like certain parts. Yeah. I was like, this guy all over the place. <laughs> yeah, but it's not. It's just this is his clones. Yeah, sound the same. yeah, but I guess they get influenced by him too, mm. right? So, you ever meet Drake? You ever he ever come no. in here when he was young? Well, or in I, young I saw an interview that um, he said that he bought his first turntables by us. Okay, and I feel I remember his mom and dad coming. I feel mm. so. You know what I mean? Yeah. But no, I don't think I ever met him. You know, but. Long time ago, you, you never know. know. Yeah, 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 so many years, right? Yeah. People come in and uh, he could have passed through real quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. coming by some record and gone. Yeah, not even know that. Oh, that's I don't even know. Yeah. So who designed the logo? This um, very first um, logo was done by um, D. I don't even know him, but he was graphics design and everything. And then after that, one of my guys in the store fix it up, and you know. Make it a little cleaner. Because it's been mm -hmm. the same logo for what? like Basically, yeah. Yeah. For yeah. only 29 years. Yeah. It's when Nav and Jason came and they said, well, I said, let's change the name or whatever. They said, no, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. No. Just keep it like that, you know? Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. So, if you change, think about if you changed the name from Play the Records, what would you have changed the name to? I don't know. This The funny thing is this, is like, I just, the before we open, I just said, um, I didn't even realize we we opening and then I just want to do it quick, right? Yeah. And then um, how you what, what are we gonna call the store? I just ah play the record, man. I said <laughs> that's it. And then we just did uh, play the record and that's it. And then <laughs> my buddy, my buddy, that's just uh, make the design fast. Mm -hmm. And that was it. That's in thirty <laughs> years later, still that's here. In. What's what's it? Jeez. Just play the record, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just play the record, man. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Oh, yeah. that's Sick amazing. Man, that is awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> like, and oh, then man. people in the beginning, they didn't really know how to say it, and it didn't rule good, and you know, mm. like even Westerners, and and then after a while, then it get caught on, and people just said, you know, they know. Yeah, they play know the record. It's people natural. still going down on the um, Young Street location. Looking for you. Oh yeah. Oh, they still looking and say, hey, where are all you? I'm here by Young Street. <laughs> what happened to all you? <laughs> right? But uh, you figure that they'll have Google, Google or yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. But uh, a lot of people don't have Facebook, boy. Wow. And a lot of people don't not, still not on social media. Yeah. And they don't know. Hey, at least they're still checking for you. Yeah. That's you good. Though, right? Like a few years uh, later, they like, when did you move? Three years. Oh, shit. You know? And some people were away and... Yeah. Come back ten years. They just come like back. the guy that just walked in here, like, oh, I was going next door to get food, and I see yeah, the record. Of, mm -hmm. I have to come inside. Yeah. So and I he's like, work for the label. You got guys from the labels that use that are popping here. Like this is an important place. Yeah, I tell everybody come by. You know, like, uh, and they bring the kids. Mm. Mm -hmm. Show them what vinyl is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we have that discussion on our show. Forty fives. We have to make sure we broke it down. What the forty fives are. Yeah. We made. We have to take a picture of one so we yeah, can we show them. Perfect. Then we can show the people because they don't know what that is. Yeah. yeah. Forty fives. We got tapes, lots of forty fives here. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Last couple of questions, because you're you're a man who's seen the Toronto scene change over the years. Like you've seen the evolution yeah. over. Hmm? Is, is you've seen it, the evolution over a couple like couple of decades and uh, three decades right of yeah, watching the way that the streets have changed and we've been asking this question to all our guests right uh, based on last year's um, gun violence and everything that happened right because last year we had like the highest amount of, of, of murders since 1991 they said yeah so my question to you is what do you think we could do in 2019 so that we don't get a repeat of the way 2018 was <sighs> Well, all these cuts that for doing, I don't think they help. Mm. It's gonna make it worse. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because I know people who had a job today, yesterday, and today they don't have a job. Mm. And what are they gonna do? And lots of people. The digital age already putting a lot of people out of, out of work. Mm -hmm. And then 
people who are out of work they have to change their skill how do yeah. you do that they need money to go to school and change and learn and and this stuff right yeah and their age and what are they gonna do they're gonna maybe go and steal or or do something they don't have to do it to survive yeah. right yeah yeah is the same stuff going on in Trinidad because a lot of Venezuelans come into Trinidad now mm -hmm. and they have nothing. So if you send them back, what are they going to do? They're not going to, you know what I mean? They will take anything yeah. because they just need, need some food and shelter. Yeah. Mm. We have a big problem in Trinidad, like yeah. over 80,000. We can't handle that. We already have people that can get work on, on stuff, right? In Trinidad, right? So mm -hmm. if you have these people, they will, they will work for cheap. They work for food, yeah. a little bread and thing. Yeah. Wow. So, and causing a lot of problems back home to now. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going to happen. Because more and more people, you know, from the digital age, um, all the mom and, mom and pop stores closing down. Look at Young Street. It's all condos now. Yeah. yeah. Right? They made it, um, they raised the taxes because of the, um, that's how, that's why we move. Mm. We, our tax ru r raised 7,000 in one year. I can't make Holy it. Holy shit. I, already, I was already um, tight already. Mm -hmm. You raised 7,000 in one year. They know what they're doing. <sighs> Look at House of Lords. Last year, no, the year after, he was paying 76,000. We are paying uh, 43 and then going to 50. I said, forget it. Yeah. So I don't, yeah, that's just property tax. Just we didn't even pay rent. We didn't pay like the hydro and water and all employees. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Like even for, like I, we don't even make money here. I just doing it for, I just giving it a little try and see what's going on, you know? Yeah, try yeah. and do the online thing because right now you got to do everything online now. Yeah. People buying food online, mm -hmm. uh, everything, shoes, clothes, house, car. Yeah. Everything's done online. Everything online. Yeah. So you're saying if the, if it's not if not everybody is getting an equal distribution of of yeah. wealth, should get can get hectic. I think so. Yeah. Like how much people are gonna be out of job? You know, you got and plus um, it's education, hospitals. He's cutting everywhere. Yeah. Mm. The man's cutting everywhere. The man just cut even um, daycare for kids. Right, like that. Mm. And he's doing it so sneaky. You know, like in the in the in the cover of night, mm -hmm. like just wake up, shit is cut. Yeah, yeah, like you just and get then, the um, you know, like in the my, morning. My nephew was slightly autistic, right? But um, he's good now. Mm -hmm. Reason why? Because we had help when my sister had help when yeah. he was young. Got the help, and then one day when he was a teenager he snapped out of it yeah yeah he's still you know good uh, but way better mm -hmm. he's high functioning now he working and everything yeah. you think a, a lot of people who are in that situation if they don't get a help yeah even if we will be stuck with you know yeah and how they going to be able to handle that yeah like the moms and the, you know fathers and family yeah it's hectic man alzheimer's and all that stuff you know yeah same thing if he cut that my dad have, have Alzheimer's. Yeah. I mean, he's doing much better. But we need all of that stuff. Yeah. That's yeah, true. He shouldn't be, you know, like what that kind of... What he's doing is like what M Mike Harris did mm. before. Like, when I was going to high school, the man cut everything. We didn't even have sports teams. Mm. We were lucky if we had a basketball team, right? And yeah. I went to a school where there was supposed to be football, soccer, hockey, all of this stuff. And none of it was there because of cuts. Yeah. And then Doug Ford is just like taking a page right out of his, his playbook. And with that, the murder rate is going up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, some good points being brought up here, yo. Um, I guess in closing, what you, what do you, what's the next thing for a play to record? Well, for like you, I say, you, we, I'm just focusing right now to put everything online now because we started doing and you know it's working out a little bit now but we need more mm. right so and plus the internet you know with the equipment is a lot of challenges too right so yeah. with prices and so we're gonna we're trying to put everything on online and see what happens and hopefully okay. things turn you know so you guys have a website up and everything oh yeah we have our website okay. playtorecord.com uh, we also on Discogs, mm -hmm. right? Um, Reverb.com, 
I think it's ReverbLP.com. Okay. It's something like our Discogs. Just started. Um, and that's how we, you know. And you have a social media footprint. Yep. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Yo, oh, I'll play the record. I'll play the record. Okay. Just play the record, man. Just play the record, man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, exactly. Eugene, man. Hmm? What the, the, the episode? The episode, yeah. Just play, just play the, play the record, record, man. I think that's, so that's that's the <laughs> name of our episode you can put today. Put man at the end, though. Just, just play, play the record, record man. man. So, Eugene, man, it's, it's been a pleasure, dog. She's easy as shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I feel like this was it was, it was necessary for us to speak to you because, like, besides you being a legend, like a lot of people haven't gotten to hear from you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I really appreciate you speaking with well, us today. Okay? I'm a guy I like to be low key, you know. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why I don't really do too much. Mm -hmm. I just do my thing, stay out of trouble. Yeah. You know, and push music. The music can't stop. Yeah. Like sometimes I remember um, some of the DJs will call me like in the middle of the night, hey, and then I need to start still like 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Mm. All them guys know when I was on Young Street, you know. We there, me and Donna, we there till like 2 o'clock in the morning sometimes. Yeah. And then, uh, oh shoot, I forget, I, want, I need to play this record. I don't have the record. Or a Serato record, um, skipping. Mm. You can, can you bring it on for me? Oh, my headphone broke. I have a gig in half an hour. I say, okay, where you, where you at? <coughs> and I just go down there like, uh, oh, you guys on my way home. Cool. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I just drop it off. The music can't stop. Nice. I kind of, I guess I, I kind of respect the DJs a lot, right? Mm -hmm. More than, you know, but uh, that's why, and they, they helped me out. And I had all these uh, big DJs, um, Chris Shepard, Headley, mm -hmm. remember those guys? Yeah. They're all in the radio station, X, Mastermind, all of them used to come down to the store, right? Yeah. So I had a very good relationship with those guys. Yeah. And, um, you know, Jazzy, all them guys, DTS. Mm. Bronski, all of them guys. Wow. Paul Lopez. Just all the legends. Just, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I see the poster over there. Son of Soul Day over exactly. there. Exactly. Oh, man. Wow. R.I.P. This is his record that he got signed, but I, I bought that record. You know what I mean? From him. Okay. Well, you okay. know when he passed away and then yeah. he was auctioning all the records? I have his shirt. Mm. I got a shirt. Right, right, right. I got right, a t-shirt. Right, right, right. That's why I noticed. I wanted to sell it in store. But they didn't have enough. Uh, wow. Maybe you should yeah. reprint it. Like Masimba, he's another guy. He know already. We used to talk all 2 o'clock in the morning. He used to come down to the store mm -hmm. and talk. And then he'll, he'll like, if somebody new come in the store, he will show them new records. This this is what samples so-and-so, so-and-so, you know? Yeah. Uh, he, we, and we used to sit down there and talk for like hours about health and all kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And music. Too bad, you know. In yeah, man, a good guy. Yeah, man, mm -hmm. legend, man, legend, yes. legends, Listen legends. Well. Yo, like I said, enough respect. You know what Thank I'm saying? You. Another episode gone down. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Another, another classic episode. one. Uh, just nice as location. much as all the classics on the wall, though. Wow, this is so much. Sizzla, Black Cancel Moon, and everything. Like, what's the, what do you think the rarest record you have in here is? Rarest record, well. We do discogs mm -hmm. upstairs, so I have a guy that handle it. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. He usually just handle it because I have too much thing to go through. Yeah. Uh, ordering, receiving, dealing with customers, phone, phone calling, tickets. We sell, you know. Yeah. We sell yeah. ticket parties. Yes, yes. I used to come yeah. to get my redemption tickets. Yeah, you can still get them here. Yeah, I know, but I don't <laughs> go to redemption as much as I used to. Yeah. So, but yeah. Tickets all the time. Caravan coming everything. up now, so lots of phone calls. Mm. Point is ringing. Yes. Oh, Caravan must be crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah all yeah. the DJs in town for parties in Caravan? Yeah. It's gonna be a busy season. Well, by the time that Caravan hits, I think this episode will be out. So, you know what I'm saying? People will be able to to catch the vibe at the same time. Yeah. And we'll see Ka Kawhi. <laughs> he's gonna be. Yeah, um, man's gonna come for. <laughs> well, he's gonna be with um. Jamal. Yeah. Oh, Magoo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eh? Supposed to be coming down for that. Mm. Well, I don't know how, how his reception will be. He might get bottled. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. We got another one. Eugene.
play the record. Play the record, man. Um, I, I was gonna call it World's Most Smoked Out Podcast, but we ain't smoking. <laughs> so, we love hip hop. Scratch that. <laughs> That's good though. You scratch <laughs> that today. Yeah. Mm. Cheer. Ah, ah, ah. Thank you again. No problem, man. <laughs>